Hi there, welcome back. Enough studying for now. I think I've uh, got a fair idea of the FM alignment instructions and how to go about them. So I think we'll do that. I'm going to do the uh, FM IF alignment. Check if that's uh, more or less aligned or not. But just before we get on with that, I'd like to invite you to visit the sponsors of this video, PCB Way. They are the PCB manufacturers that I use. You will get amazing prices. Right now they're running the PCB Way Big Sale, the Christmas Shopping Festival 2020. And you'll be able to enjoy some incredible discounts, a lot of giveaways, a lot of prizes, a lot of vouchers, just the right solution for your Christmas needs. So pop over to PCBWay.com and help support the sponsors of this video. Now, if we go to the instructions, they give us four steps. The first one, 10.7 megacycles modulated, that's the eye of frequency. So we send a signal at 10.7 megahertz with a audio tone FM modulated on it. We inject it into test point B. Now test point B, according to, again, the service manual, is a pin sticking out here. It's that little pin over there between the two transistors, there. So we'll put our signal generator and we're gonna follow the convention of the positive is ground. So we'll connect the positive of the signal generator. It doesn't really make any difference, but we'll connect that there and we'll connect the negative to there. Now, this means that this is actually connected to ground. So maybe it's the other way around. Well, I'll see what the result is. Because this thing is floating, it's not uh, being powered with a ground or earth referenced power supply. This should not make any difference because this is an AC signal coming through anyway. I've got it coming through the um, pi attenuator, the switcher, just to give the uh, isolation that I need with the capacitor there because they do say connected with a capacitor. Continuing the instructions, you set the dial at 98 megahertz, which is where it is now. And you adjust trimmers, L105, L106, L28, 29, 32, 33, and 36. That is across the voice coil, reduce the input so that the output is not greater than 0.4 volts. Now that means we're sending an audio tone, FM modulated, on the um, IF frequency carrier. And we should hear that. Now let's switch it on and see what we do here. And we can hear that. I've got the volume on max now. We can hear that. But before going into that, let me show you what it is that we're doing. Signal generator is sending a signal at 10.7 megahertz. The amplitude is 8 millivolts. We'll see why in a second. There is modulation on it. It is FM type. Deviation of about 5 kilohertz. I probably put more on there. 10 kilohertz. FM frequency, 1 kilohertz tone. And we will activate that. Now I've got that coming out of there into my stepped attenuator dummy antenna system. All I'm doing, I've got no attenuation on here. All I'm doing is using the fact that this is um, AC coupled. There's a capacitor in series. So we don't have the signal generator directly coupled to the input source, test B there. Then we've got the signal coming out of here and going to the radio with the positive on the chassis, which is a positive ground, and the negative going to the test point, test point B over there. Now, if I switch it on, I'm going to put the AC voltmeter on or across the speaker output. And if I put the volume up, we start hearing it and we see that it's deviating. What is that? That's on the one volt range. So it's 0.3 volts. So maximum volume is fine. We don't have to worry about that. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, let me try nine millivolts. Yeah, that's still under 400. 10 millivolts, that's 400. I'll leave it at 10 millivolts. Put the volume down, and I'm going to put a dummy load across there because I don't want to hear that noise. 
I've placed a uh, 8 ohm resistor across the speaker terminals, removed the actual external speaker so we don't have to hear the tone. We're still loading the radio and I've reduced the, uh, the level to 8 millivolts just so we get 300 millivolts, which is not bad. That's at maximum volume anyway. I can then play with this. I can make it, put it down one level and I can put it in the middle if I want to or above. That is now on the 300 millivolt range and at maximum volume it actually is slightly more than 300 millivolts. So we leave it in the middle, that's a good place to work with. Now what are we adjusting? If we look at the instructions again they tell us to adjust L105, L106, L28, L29, L32, L33 and L36 and we're trying to get the greatest amplitude on the output across the speaker coil. So where are those coils? Well, the first one, L105 and 106, are down here. They're inside here. One is reached from the front and the other one from the back. Then we go to the IF chain and then it's very simple. It's this IF transformer. One is at the bottom and one is accessed through the top here. The second IF transformer, again, one at the bottom and one accessed through the top here. And the third IF transformer, one at the bottom and one access through the top here. Now 36 is the one at the bottom according to the instructions. So we're going to do those two front and back, this one top and bottom, this one top and bottom, and this one just the bottom. The top one is the discriminator adjustment which we'll do next. Now to start I'm going to do the one in the front here because it's quite easily accessible. No. Nope. Well, there's a bit of improvement there. There's a bit of improvement there. Okay. And this one here, I have to use a different sticky thingy. Well, that's about it. That seems to be peaked. Good. That was a bit weird. I'm not sure that I, I don't want to mess with it too much, but it was very difficult to actually grab onto it. Let's start with these guys. Now to do these, I'm going to lay this on its front just to make it easier to work with. Now I'm leaving the volume where it is because now it's not easy to reach. So let's start here. This is not the right size. I'm going to have a problem. This is one of those hex shapes and I don't have a proper sticky thing. Well, that is basically peaked. It was there. I didn't change anything at all. Let me try the top one. Now that's accessible through the top here. That is not tuning, I'm just touching the signal wire. I haven't got it yet. Oh, that's about it. That's a peak. Not much to it, is it? Didn't do much. Let's try the next one here. Nope. That looks like it was peaked already. No change. Next one. Oh, down. Oh. Okay, we've got a bit there. Okay, we've got a bit there. Good. That's improved it somewhat. Next one. This guy over here. Or rather this one. Sorry. Oh God. What kind of... Is it, is it a screw one? No. Nope. Oh, 
Okay, we peaked it a little bit. All right, we've improved it just a little bit. And that's good enough for me. Okay, now we'll go to the next step. Well, it looks like I've got this thing wrong. I think I misidentified uh, these ones, these IF transformers here, the FM IF transformers, as to which was top and which was bottom. According to there, the secondary L37 is actually the top, and the top is not the top of the radio, it's the top of the IF transformer, which is on the other side, which I thought was L36. Okay, so when I aligned the IF, I was doing the wrong one. I was actually aligning or changing the discriminator. And what you do is you put the um, voltage, DC voltage test on there, on the center one that's pin 6 of this IF transformer. And see it goes the other way. Got to get it back to 0. All right. Bloody hell, that took a while. I lost the signal for some reason, and uh, we've got it back to where it's, mm, it's deviated a little bit, just by moving this, it, this thing is out, out of the chassis, so it's reacting to all sorts of stuff. Well, that's close enough. So it looks like we've aligned it. I've just got to correct the alignment of this uh, top one, which I messed up thinking it was L37. So I'll put it back on AC volts and uh, just check the alignment again. And I think that's our FM IF alignment done. And here she is, folks, as shiny as she's going to get. I managed to get all the grime off. I polished it. I um, waxed or polished actually the, uh, the leatherette so it's all come out nicely no more gooey sensation when you put your fingers across it there are certain things you can't get rid of and that is the bubbles on the chrome but she's looking good the back looks perfect bit of dust all the lettering was cleaned up so it's uh, standing out now Brilliant. And that is just the outside. Now, if you recall, there was a hinge missing there. Not anymore. I managed to fix that. And I'm pretty proud of myself on that one. I got a very thin sheet of metal and I cut a shape of that um, hinge, stuck it to the back there. Drilled a hole through it, and now it works, which is great, because that really was an eyesore. And there it is. Everything was cleaned up. These, uh, this plate was removed, the screws were cleaned up, everything was cleaned up underneath. I did the best I could on here. There's some, well, there's a lot of uh, stuff here that you just cannot get off. It's actually... The bronze there that's uh, worn off. That there is the chrome that's worn off, but everything here has been cleaned up. So this one is showing its age, but it is as refreshed as it can possibly be. Okay, what have we done here? Cleaned all that up. I've cleaned the hinges as much as I could. Try to remove some of the rust there. The screws were cleaned up. All the back, the leather was cleaned up. And then I had to make a decision about this power supply. And what I decided to do was to leave it, well, sort of. I left the transformer in there. This is a um, 300 milliamp transformer. And I know that uh, when I put the bulbs on, the two light bulbs on, it draws at 12 volts about 170 milliamps. Otherwise, it draws about 20, 25, 30 milliamps. So I decided to build this rectifier and voltage regulator. And what it is, it's a, it's a full wave with a center tapped here. This transformer is uh, it's about 12, 0, 12. 
and so I used two diodes and made a full wave rectifier like you do in a tube radio. Two diodes, the center tap is zero, and then um, 2200 microfarads filter cap into a 12 volt uh, 7812 voltage regulator. A 100 nanofarad cap there just for transient response, and then that goes in where the other one went. I decided to leave it like that because I've been looking at some, um, I believe it's the 7000, the Transoceanic Royal 7000. It has a transformer just about here. And I also noticed this output transformer is completely shielded. The orientation of this guy is completely opposite to that one. So I tried it. I decided to give it a try and see if, it, um, if we got any noise. The result was we have no noise. So I decided to put that in there. But the other one was just too bulky and it was sticking up here by the speaker. So I think this thing looks a hell of a lot neater. The other components were also a bit shot. So I, had to, I would have had to replace them anyway. I just felt that it was pretty badly done. So this one is in place now and the radio will work on mains as it was before. Obviously the easiest way would have been to just use a uh, jack plug. It's one of the very thin ones with 12 volts from an external supply. But this is how the owner had it. So I decided to give it back to him the way it was. And um, at least I'm happier with what I've done here. Now fitting this all back was just the usual. I had to find two new screws down there because some of them were missing. Basically the same thing. It was mostly cleaning. That was cleaned up, came out very well. I also did a lot of cleaning on the antenna and the wave, uh, wave magnet. This thing here, you could hardly read wave magnet on there. So that's been cleaned up and oiled and everything else. This, these hinges have been uh, lubricated. This thing now works fantastically. The antenna comes out perfectly. And it was in perfect shape, which is a good thing. So now all that's left is for us to try it out. Now, before I try it out, I want to tell you, I'm using the mini whip antenna here again. And it's not that that antenna isn't good. It's just that all the radios I've uh, tested on this bench, I've used the mini whip and I like to use the same antenna just so that we can get a, a better comparison if we are, you know, comparing one to the other. So mini whip antenna, but first of all, FM. We've got the uh, FM AFC over here. It works pretty well. The dial lights, there we go. Push down, both of them working. And let's try <laughs> FM. <laughs> Football again. Vinte e cinco anos da morte do escritor. Olá, sejam bem-vindos ao Melancómico. Um pensamento para comentar sobre a amizade. Tolero que todos os meus amigos, até as suas virtudes. O Vitor. Felizas. A única situação é a do Porto. A MS romântica sentimental. A Júlia é sem esforço uma cozinheira de So what can I say about FM? Picks up the usual stations, it's pretty clear. It's not as bright as some of the radios I've tested here, but it sounds good and it picks up pretty well. So the treble and bass control is just basically bass to the left, treble to the right. It could probably do with the separate controls, but this is what we have. The AFC, as I said, works very well. Now I'm going to show you, and of course it's either football or music, so I can't really play much on there. But let's go to the long wave, which without the mini whip, I can hardly hear this Porto Santo beacon at 358. Oh, and just a caveat, there's a storm that we've been going through for a few days. So there's a heck of a lot of noise. If you listen carefully, you might hear the wind howling. So there's a lot of noise on, on the AM bands. Some of it is to do with that, obviously. Get it. 
See that noise? Lightning. There's my beacon again. Hell of a lot of noise. Medium wave. This is North Africa somewhere. The Madeira station. Football in the Canary Islands. Just a comment on this uh, repeated station on here. Um, somebody mentioned, I think it was Stefan, that this could be the result of products produced by overloading the mini whip. But what I tried earlier is I tried, this is one station that appears about five times on here. And I tried with the wave magnet and I was getting it. You have to sort of orient this properly. And I was getting it in exactly the same places that I'm getting here. So it probably is a question of uh, a case of repeated transmitters coming from the Canary Islands. Because we are at this distance, basically they're all the same distance from us and we're getting the result of three, four, five repetitions of the same band. So let's go to shortwave. Normally don't get much down here. This is the uh, 2.4 2, 2, 2 megahertz. Exactly what I expected. This is the uh, 49 meter band. So that's pretty busy there. It is evening. This is now the 31 meter band. Twenty-five meters. Not much at this time of night. Well, I was wrong. Thank you, sir. The next thirty minutes. What can or should the rest of the world do to resolve the conflicts in northern Ethiopia? Well, yeah. From the senior official for Africa at the U.S. State Department. Having a coffee break. If you have 
Su primer partido en el once titular. Well, that was pretty busy. 19 meters. One solitary station, and finally 16 meters, I don't expect anything here. Back to FM. Well, we'll end with that note. Football game going on. Don't really know what it is, but it sounds very exciting. Well, folks, this is the end of this adventure. The Zenith Transoceanic Royal 3000-1. It's the first Zenith that I do. And um, what can I say? It's completely different to what I've done before. It's completely different to the German radios. Um, the ones that I've had here are the Grundig. Uh, I'm talking about world band receivers. The uh, Grundig 2100, the satellite 2100, and the um, I've also had the Braun T, T1000 CD. I think that's the labeling. And they are completely different. There is a philosophy, there's a, a, a way of doing things with the German sets that differs from, for example, this one. Now, I do understand this is quite an exceptional one because this is one of the last point-to-point -point done radios that I've ever, that, that they produced. I think the 7000 is also point-to-point, -point, but um, which in itself is, is quite a feat. So yeah, this is a different philosophy altogether. However, as far as working on it is concerned, I think this one's actually easier to work on than, than for example, the Brown or the uh, Satellite. It's a lot simpler in terms of circuitry. And the other one is typical German over-engineering. You can tell right away. Um, but um, they both have their place now. I, I, I like it. I really do like this radio. I think it's incredibly well built. It's like a tank. And it's very clever the way some of the circuitry has been applied and the, and the way everything is actually quite serviceable. You take this thing out with four screws, it's, it's fantastic. So there is no hassle there. And the finish, well, it's, it's not supposed to be pretty. It's really a functional, a practical radio. And that in itself has got its own beauty and I like it, I really do. So I'm glad I had the opportunity to work, to work on this and I hope you've enjoyed the series and I hope that uh, you'll join me for the next one, whatever that may be. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please click like, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Stay safe.